So some really sad news coming in the last couple of minutes or so. It's literally just broken on social media. And that it's unfortunately the passing of ECW, former ECW wrestler, ECW legend, uh, Smoky Mountain wrestling wrestler and legend, New Jack Jerome Young has unfortunately passed away at the age of 58 years old. This was first reported by PW Insider. Uh, this was the quote that they said. It was Mike Johnson at PW Insider that first reported this, saying, quote, PW Insider is extremely sad to report that Jerome New Jack Young passed away earlier this afternoon following a heart attack in North Carolina where he had lived in recent years. PWInsider.com was informed by Young's wife, Jennifer, of his passing. Young was 58 at the time of his passing. Now, of course, when it comes to New Jack, look, this is um, a guy that was one of the most controversial, I think is maybe a light way of saying it, certainly one of the most controversial professional wrestlers of all time, certainly during the 90s, during his heyday in ECW and Smoky Mountain Wrestling, but he was also uh, a guy that was incredibly charismatic, um, magnetic in terms of his ability to generate, whether it was heat, a reaction, or anything from whatever crowd he was performing in front of. Obviously, there was... Um, incidents shall we say throughout his career whether it's mass transit whether it's uh, incidents on the independent scene or anything like that and certainly we do not advocate anything like that uh, but there's no doubt about it that he was incredibly charismatic and he was incredibly good at what he what he did and he was able to uh, find a niche for himself in the world of professional wrestling throughout the late 90s especially in that era of ECW where professional wrestling was changing uh, for the better or worse whatever you want to say it but when professional wrestling was changing he was he was very good and as I mentioned finding his niche finding his niche now obviously a little bit of background the new jack name that he used in his professional wrestling career was inspired by the film new jack city once young imagined fans chanting it while he was in the ring over and over again a vision that obviously came true during his career, certainly came true in the case of ECW and throughout after ECW, post ECW, whilst he didn't end up in in a WWE or anything like that once his career in ECW finished up. The fact that he didn't, and he's still very widely known, even with today's generation, everyone knows who New Jack is because of the maybe the infamy that comes with his name, his legacy, his matches, but certainly was a name that did get chanted widely by whatever crowd he did perform in front of. Now, he got into professional wrestling in Georgia. He was mentored by uh, Ray Candy out there in Georgia. And arguably, New Jack's most famous work did come in ECW, but also came in SMW, in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, which, of course, was Jim Cornette's territory, uh, where he formed the Gangsters with uh, Mustafa. Now, they obviously were put together, as I mentioned, in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Uh, and really, whilst you had Mustafa as the, the heavy and the muscle of the group, it was New Jack's promos. And it was New Jack's ability to talk and really get heat in that territory on the microphone uh, that really opened people's eyes and really got people talking about the gangsters in a way that people hadn't done before and really uh, broke New Jack onto the professional wrestling scene. If you haven't seen any of the New Jack promos that he cut in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, I would really recommend going back and watching them. They were so not explicit because he didn't really get like that until he went to ECW, but they certainly, there was a line drawn there was a line drawn in that territory and new jack all the time stepped over it all the time stepped over it and it got to a point in smw they had to start putting disclaimers on the bottom of the screen when new jack would cut his promo to say that this doesn't reflect the views of smw or our television partners or anything like that because he was saying some really out there stuff uh, and not necessarily out there in terms of oh it's crazy and all this kind of stuff more he was saying stuff that just with the climate at the time, when it comes to race, he mentioned O.J. Simpson and his trial and all that kind of stuff at the time. He was really, I mentioned, there was a line you didn't cross. And New Jack not only stepped over, he, he jumped over it. He absolutely jumped over it. And it was really, it was that kind of infamy. And it was that kind of uh, the sort of notorious personality and notorious reputation that he was starting to generate for himself and Mustafa as the gangsters in SMW uh, that uh, actually had him 
um, be attracted to go to ECW with Paul Heyman. Um, and as I mentioned, those interviews that he did in SMW really did put him on the map and actually led to, uh, for the tag team, headlining multiple matches and events for SMW against the likes of the Rock and Roll Express, who, of course, were in the territory at the time. Uh, even The Undertaker, when The Undertaker came in, he was also... Uh, had matches against New Jack or the, the gangsters during that period of time. Uh, but I remember Jim Cornette doing an interview, a, a shoot interview, where he was asked why the gangsters, why they moved. And he kind of mentioned previously that just the heat that they were getting at that period of time was almost so intense that they had to move him on. They had to move him on. And looking back on it, whilst SMW certainly did put New Jack on the map and the gangsters on the map, New Jack is best known, obviously, for his run in Extreme Championship Wrestling and ECW during, obviously, the mid to late 90s. They were really a match made in heaven. They were the perfect match because ECW, obviously, it's in the title of the company, Extreme Championship Wrestling. They were pushing things to the extreme and they were pushing things to a level that people hadn't really seen in North America at the time. They were... Paul Heyman likes to describe it as they were they were grunge during a period of time where people were doing, you know, the, the, the hair bands of the 80s. They wanted to be Nirvana and come in and be grunge. And if you look at someone that's a grunge professional wrestler, that's New Jack. They were doing violence. They were doing realism. They were saying curse words in the promos. They were being as real as possible, maybe too real. And maybe that spilt over in terms of the... Um, things he was doing outside of the ring shall we say at the time and certainly some of the incidents that happened in the ring nevertheless um it, it was it was a perfect place for him to really expand on what he was already doing that was already controversial in smw at the time and it really was a match made in heaven and he continued to push the envelope he absolutely pushed the envelope and he and uh, mustafa they had some absolutely uh, unbelievable unbelievable matches and some unbelievable moments and what was always great about the gangsters is that that what was so fun about them obviously is that the, they, they during their matches the music played over and over and over again uh, what was the song it was it was ice cube and dr dre's natural born killers it would just blast over and over and over again and it kind of it was a real unique presentation because essentially what it did was it gave you a feeling of, you know, those scenes in, I think it's there's a great scene, I think it's in Blade, and obviously this was before then, but it's in Blade where whenever you have those scenes in like a nightclub and the music's playing over and over and over again, I think there's a scene in Batman that's like this in one of the Batman films where they're fighting in the nightclub and uh, you can just see the violence, but all you can hear is the music. And it kind of felt like that in the presentation of having uh, natural born killers blast over and over and over again. Now, in terms of success in ECW, New Jack held the ECW World Tag Team Championships on several occasions. Um, obviously, some of the things he was doing in ECW at the time were insane. He became very well known for jumping off of balconies or jumping out of balconies in whatever arenas that they were in. I think several times he got some real, real serious injuries because of it. And uh, it was it was it was craziness. And those dives that he did, I mean, really did. Uh, take a real physical toll on him. It was uh, at, I believe it was Living Dangerously 2000, where he did a dive. It was onto Spike Dudley, I think it was. Um, it was onto someone, I can't remember who it was. Anyway, that was one that went horribly wrong, and I think didn't he fracture his skull or something like that? It was just, it was, it was real horrific. But if you really want to get a great, a great look at the the life and crimes of new of new jack because this was the episode uh, this was the title of the episode that they did during the second season of dark side of the ring last year obviously we've just had dark side of the ring season three uh, debut on vice over the course of the last few weeks it was actually a show yesterday on nick uh, nick gage uh, but in season two of dark side of the ring they did an episode i think it was called the life and crimes of new jack and it's a real fantastic job they did a real fantastic job during the episode detailing all of what I've really just said, his beginnings in pro wrestling, his rise, SMW, ECW, and really getting into the nitty gritty of his life, his uh, addictions, his abuse, um, you know, in his childhood and in and in his and obviously in his 
when he was older in terms of illicit substances and all that kind of stuff. And also goes into, as I mentioned, the mass transit incident, the stabbing incidents and all that kind of stuff. And just the unique character that Jerome Young was. He is a unique character, but it also on the other side of things. And yes, he was maybe a crazy guy and all that kind of stuff. And again, I'm not advocating or justifying anything that he did in terms of the negative stuff, certainly the mass transit stuff and all that kind of stuff. But this was a guy that if you did listen to the interviews, they were incredibly interesting and fascinating. He was a real complex and unique guy. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, I think the reason why people know New Jack so well, obviously, is because of his time in ECW and because of the craziness that has always followed him throughout his career and life, whether it was all of these infamous incidents. It's because of his controversial nature, everyone knows his name. And there has and will be a lot written about New Jack I'm sure in the next couple of days, and there has been a lot written and said about him um, throughout his career anyway. And when it comes to people reflecting on his life and his career over the course of the next couple of days, and 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 people surely will, people will talk about the the good and the bad and the indifferent, and certainly they will focus on the negative aspects of his life, which uh, they shouldn't necessarily focus all on that, but it's you can't tell the New Jack story without at least mentioning whether it's mass transit, whether it's the, the stabbing things, whether it's the uh, when he was fighting that, that wrestler that was in, was it his 60s or 70s? All of that, all of that does have to be talked about, but one thing you can't ignore when it comes to New Jack is the guy loved professional wrestling. The guy loved professional wrestling. He loved to perform and he loved being New Jack. People can talk about New Jack and Jerome Young. I'm not sure that they are two separate personalities or different people. Uh, possibly they were different. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe once the, the red light flashed on, he became New Jack. But when you sat him down in an interview, he was Jerome. I don't know. Uh, there's no doubt that this guy did sacrifice a lot in terms of a physical toll on his body for the industry of professional wrestling. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. And um, I don't think as far as when any interviews that I've seen or anything like that, I don't think he's ever regretted any of the pain that he's put himself through physically, mentally or emotionally. Uh, obviously, um, there will be lots more that come out over the course of the next few days. And uh, the most important thing when people talk about New Jack is that obviously when it comes to any passing of any uh, member of the professional wrestling family, that our thoughts, com prayers and condolences are to New Jack's family, his friends, his wife, Jennifer, of course, who did inform PW Insider of his passing earlier today. And as I mentioned, if, if, you, if you haven't, I would definitely recommend to go watch the Dark Side of the Ring season two episode of New Jack, the life and crimes of New Jack, because it really does encapsulate everything that was about this man, the good. And again, that's the good, the bad, the ugly, everything about him. And he was certainly a unique character. And I think it's, as I mentioned, I think the fact that um, given the, his almost his infamy and given the controversial nature, nature of his life and career, the fact that everyone, even if you might not have seen a new Jack match, you know who this guy is. You know who this guy is. And ultimately, you know, 58 years of age is, is way too young. It's way too young. And it's a shame. And, and I do uh, really feel and sympathize for his for his his family, his friends, his, his obviously his wife. Um, it's an incredibly sad situation when any professional wrestler passes. It is. Uh, and as I mentioned, there'll be a lot that is spoken about when it comes to New Jack over the course of the next few days. A lot of people will talk about all of the aspects of his life and 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 his career. One thing you can't you obviously you can't ignore is his contributions to professional wrestling, whether or not you agree with his contributions or not. This is a guy that did sacrifice a lot. This is a guy that did sacrifice a lot. And uh, and again, if you've got any preconceptions about about the man, about his life, about his career, again, and I don't mean this to be a you know one big plug to say watch Dark Side of the Ring or anything like that, but the the great thing about that episode last year when they when they spoke about New Jack and they spoke about his life and his career and again the good and the bad and all those kind of things in his life, I the thing that I really felt coming out of it is that we understood a lot more a lot more about the man behind new jack we understood a lot more about jerome young and his his background his childhood and uh, maybe some of the reasons why he behaved or acted the way he did not that that justifies anything uh, but the guys the, it, what can often be overlooked when it comes to new jack is his talent i think uh, and again it's it must be said it must be said that some of the things that he did do in terms of those those negative incidents were not good. They were not good, and he, 
uh, somehow did, uh, you know, I wouldn't say got away with it or anything like that because I don't think that's fair. Um, but there were certainly times where he was, he obviously overstepped the line. He obviously overstepped the line, but um, there's no doubt he loved professional wrestling. And I think people can overlook his talent. Uh, in terms of being a promo, this guy was was pretty damn good. And like I said, go back and watch those SMW promos because then you can really see the talent that this guy had at the time. Talk about a modern day, you know, spitting fire on the microphone. That was New Jack at the time. So it's incredibly sad news. And, and once I mentioned, what I said before, obviously thoughts and prayers go out to his family, his friends, and deepest condolences go to New Jack, who unfortunately has passed away at the age of 58 years of age. Rest in peace, New Jack. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.